Yeah, hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. Bitcoin continues to hover sideways. Um, since earlier today, the price has dropped a little bit and we can see that the generally in the crypto market, we also saw this drop in the last few hours. But overall, you know, it's still moving sideways. Dogecoin going up, by the way, today. And um, I think I'm, it's time to do another Dogecoin update video um, because I did one weeks ago, many weeks ago, and Dogecoin did back then also come into the target area. And it's very interesting now that is doing exactly what um, what we expected. As soon as crypto hits that target area between those lower FIP, FIP levels, it's just a question of time until it breaks out. So yeah, very interesting currently what the crypto market is doing. However, it is driving a lot of people mad. And uh, yeah, let's start, to, uh, let's start to take a look at Bitcoin because why is it driving a lot of people mad? Because the way Bitcoin is currently behaving, it is very, very long, very tiring very volatile it is at the moment, which is good because it's at least more interesting than what we did down here where the price did hardly move at all. But to be honest, when I look at what the price is doing here at the moment, it's also hardly moving. But we had a longer period here now of ongoing price increases until the price broke here, um, or it didn't break, but it moved all the way to the 200 day moving average here at around 48.3K. So just to remind you, for anybody or maybe for anybody who's new we've been talking or we talk obviously here about the Elliott wave method Elliott wave theory and so far you know there are two scenarios i'm really looking at here um my primary scenario has been here that we are that we were coming down um this was a three wave move here that we were coming up in a fourth wave this was my primary scenario until bitcoin broke above 45.8k yeah um so but that is now the alternative and that after this fourth wave, we would sell out straight away into this yellow target area. The now primary expectation is that the price is coming up a little bit higher. Um, it's a slightly different wave count. Overall, it doesn't change the end result. We're also going to land here in this lower target area, which I have um, put into the region between 20 and 29K. And so this would be, ex the, the, based on this, we would expect Bitcoin now that it broke above 45.8K, which was a structurally very important level. Yeah, it was here, this wave um, W, whoops, oh, no, don't wanna move the lines. This, come on, this W wave, which is part of a more complex correction here. Yeah? So we broke above that. And since then that alternative scenario or back then alternative scenario, now primary scenario of this larger B wave, this larger correction to the upside has become much more likely. But overall, Bitcoin is really making it very difficult at the moment. I think Bitcoin did not move up as strong as I expected after we broke above that 45.8K level. Now, that could be because on the daily chart, Bitcoin was quite overbought. Yeah, if we take a look at the RSI on the daily, Bitcoin was very close to the 70 level of the RSI. And you can see that here. Yeah, so it was just a question of time until it corrects down again. And it's doing that at the moment, or at least it's moving sideways. And what you can see here on the chart is currently this zone of resistance here between 40, um, yeah, 47 and a half K and 48.3 K. This is where Bitcoin needs to get through to really um, get to these higher levels. Yeah, to, to get to this higher level wave B to do this more extensive correction. And the minimum that I would expect Bitcoin to do in this scenario would be the 51K level. That's a very important Fibonacci level. That is the minimum such a wave B must do. But more ideally in this scenario, I would expect the price to move between 55 and 65K. However, to really do that, the price finally needs to push higher and needs to break above the 200 day moving average. And if it doesn't, then we are now at a risk that we get a bearish crossover here on the daily chart and that we are actually still going down further. And this is how it's currently looking like primarily, unfortunately, because um, Bitcoin really plays tricks here on us. And, you know, th this could still be, don't get me wrong, even though I said above 45.8K, this wave B is getting my primary scenario. It's still not off the table that this here is just a wave four so that you have, yes, you've got your five wave move down here, but you have sub waves here, and I had that on the chart previously, um, that this here is not a wave A, but a wave three, that you're coming up here, that we will have the wave four here exactly where we are now, because, you know, even though I'm looking here at FIP levels, but a wave four can theoretically come as high 
as a wave one yeah N not typically more you know it doesn't typically retrace more than the yeah the 38.2 or the 50 percent fib retracement but it can do and um yeah therefore this is all still possible and that means if this here is a wave four first of all i told you many times that a wave four is very long it's very draining it doesn't really mean any progress for the chart yeah i mean if i've been doing this here long enough a wave four and we've seen many wave fours here since i really covered bitcoin from an elliott wave point of view and those wave fours they are oftentimes horrible they are draining they are boring they are driving people mad uh, it, you don't really see the progress in the chart it's just a bit of up and down and we need to wait for a breakout and this is currently what we are seeing i mean to be honest a wave b isn't much different but a wave b should create a bit of impulsiveness here to the upside because a wave b itself consists of an abc and that c wave should push higher yeah a wave b can do more than wave four but um, we are not seeing that at the moment and therefore we are really here in a state of you know not knowing at the moment um and again i'm i'm really telling you exactly what i expect which is that target area down here either directly or through that move up and then down and i get more and more comments again about you know why i think the price is going up from here fundamentals are so strong and so on and yes fundamentals for bitcoin are strong but um, nothing can stop bitcoin from adhering to the real uh, to the rules of financial markets i mean we've seen it why should bitcoin why should the crypto market behave differently than financial markets they don't and typically to finish a correction off you need to make a lower low that's just how it is yeah i can't change that i get so many questions um in the last few days about you know if bitcoin breaks below that 29k level it will make a lower low and um, we will enter a bear market or whatever or this is capitulation but exactly this capitulation i'm waiting for because it is just a, a rule in financial markets that you need to get all the weak hands out of the market and what we haven't seen yet in bitcoin what we haven't seen yet in bitcoin and that is another reason so one reason why i expect this move down eventually is structurally this does not look like a significant low how bitcoin would normally finish a correction absolutely not so i would we, we would need something much more significant um and you see it when you when you see it and when you have an eye for the market so before that we had this here this was the um the march 2020 significant low that finished a correction off that was also a lower low yeah for everybody who's always saying that you know if you make a lower low it's over no it's not over only after a lower low you really start that move up yeah this is how it works um, and also here this is not how you finish a correction off yeah and, and you need to finish that correction off so either straight away or through that extended move up and then down of course there is a probability that we go up straight away to new all-time highs it's very low but we have to live with that you know everything is always possible in financial markets but it's all about probabilities and we just need to make that lower low in my opinion it is just what markets normally do and as i said what we haven't seen yet in bitcoin even when we moved down here to 33k we have not seen that capitulation and you need to see that typically when you finish a correction and you see it in the stock markets yeah we've seen that nearly in the last few weeks in the stock market or in the last couple of months you know we saw tech shares and stocks and shares going down significantly yeah i mean um, we had amazon absolutely oversold it was i think the level on the rsi i've never seen or very very rarely seen such an oversold level on the amazon um chart and this was also what i recommended to the gold i mean i never recommend things but i, I tell people i tell my gold channel members with regards to stocks and shares what i invest in and i did go into these stocks and shares that were massively oversold and we've now seen here 20 30 40 50 even 80 percent increase in a few weeks for many stocks and shares for example we had a amc was one of them yeah and paypal as well but that just as a side note just really to give you an idea how normally a correction finishes and it is when the psychology of people switches towards oh damn it's over now and we haven't seen that yet people were still too bullish for bitcoin so that is just something else that i think we need to see and yes the market is currently going up but that is exactly the idea and that is exa exactly what is happening in a correction so in such a correction here either a wave b or a wave 4 it doesn't matter both are corrective waves in such a correction this is what uh 
is taking place. You know, we are going up with, you know, the correction is tricking people into the market again before we get that capitulation. And so that's what I'm waiting for. And we need to see that really that giving up of people where people say, oh no, it's over, Bitcoin gets banned or whatever. So this is just something else that tells me we haven't seen the low yet. But of course I'm not, and that is also one part of my strategy. I'm not naively believing that we definitely have to go there 100%. No, and therefore I did start to dollar cost average into Bitcoin below 40K, found that already a very attractive level, left money aside for even lower levels, of course, but this is all part of a strategy. You wanna be prepared for both scenarios, starting to dollar cost average in when prices are getting attractive and then gradually increasing that percentage um, as we go towards this target area. That is at least my strategy. No financial advice at all, that is what I'm doing, but that has worked for me very well over many years, not buying necessarily when prices are going up, but when prices are going down, or alternatively, and that is a different strategy, when you're breaking an important level and you expect prices from that level to go much higher, that would be another option to get into the market. That is how I do it. And as I said, so far that has worked pretty well. But yeah, as I said, I'm still waiting for that next move of Bitcoin, either up and then down or down straight away. Can't wait, um, but this is exactly what we're doing here in this wave. It's driving people mad. It's an extended correction. It is what it is. It is what Bitcoin is doing. And we need to get used to the idea that Bitcoin is not always only going up. We are here in a financial market and this is also characterized by corrections. We're going to see these ABC corrections. We're going to see those lower lows. That is what financial markets are doing. So we just have to get used to it. And uh, yeah, we are not that early anymore in Bitcoin and we get more and more we are going to see more and more these extended corrections, unfortunately, because the more the market cap increases, the more it's going to behave like a normal market, like a, yeah, like, like a financial market where you see the ups and downs and fundamentals, as I always say, they are already priced into the chart. So my opinion is often a waste of time to look at fundamentals. Of course, there is a need to understand the basics of whatever you're investing in, because uh, you don't want to invest in a shit coin or in something that doesn't work. Um, or that you not believe in, but anything else, you know, there's no need to look at the charts every day, uh, at the news every day. There's no need exactly like with stocks and shares also no need to look at the balance sheets of a company. It's already priced in. When these are released, the price is gonna react immediately. So there's no, no point. It's just a waste of time in my opinion. Therefore, technical analysis is objective. Yes, there are certain alternatives, of course. There are always different alternatives, but it is important to understand what does a price do or what is a market going to do when it gets below or above a certain level? And in my opinion, Elliott Wave methods or the Elliott Wave method comes closest to what you could call magic compared to any other um, method. So yeah, it works. It has worked very, very well for I would say 80 to 90% or maybe let's call it 80% of the altcoins that I cover very, very well. I think most of the altcoins have come into the target area, have seen the reversal already. And now we just wait for a few more to get into the target area, including Bitcoin. Um, Polkadot is the other one, and there might be a couple more, but most of them, the vast majority have come into the target area. And since the target area was reached, we've seen, yeah, 100% increases. I think there was one crypto that even did 130%. So yeah, that, that's what um, I believe without uh, the Elliott Wave method, I would not have been able to define those levels so accurately. And again, all I do is to apply the Elliott Wave method. It doesn't work when you get the wave count wrong, of course, and it's a lot of work, but yeah, so I believe here strongly that we are still gonna come lower. Um, but of course, nothing is guaranteed and we also need to acknowledge that, therefore it's a whole strategy that is behind this. But yeah, my both of my scenarios point here further to the downside. So a bit of a longer video here today, but um, that's my view on Bitcoin. Hopefully you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.